Barrett and welcome to the 2016 wash-up for the Western Bulldogs. It was a roller coaster year with a fairy tale ending and you feel that this team has the potential to contend for many years to come. Matthew Lloyd. They do, Dame. I think their the under-22 players are exceptional mm. and I don't think they would have planned to win a premiership this year. They would have been building towards winning one in the next year or two, but they would have feared the GWS Giants. So to yeah. get one in 2016 was a phenomenal effort. That's just one of the many beauties of what yeah. happened, isn't it? They, they did things so differently mm. to what is considered standard and almost blueprint to win yeah. an AFL Premiership. Coming from seventh for starters, yeah. having a spine in, yeah. on grand final day that had Zane Cordy playing his 11th game at centre-half forward and other players, Hamling, who stood up yeah. in the finals. I just loved how they just continued to defy what uh, was, was set down as, as a blueprint for success each time. You're right. And I think they felt they took a risk bringing in five players for that first final. Yeah. Playing Liberatore, playing McRae. Wood had a dodgy ankle coming into it. And then they just blew the Eagles away. And then I think it was that moment that they thought, oh, we can actually win win this if we mm. continue to play with that Just on that, before effort, you look yeah. at the, the highlights of the home and away season, Lord, the empowering that they gained out of, out of I suppose, soaking up every single win yeah. in the finals, using that to, to mm. propel them to the ultimate success, how much can you use of that again next year? Uh, I think they can get a lot from it because they just know if they play with that energy, hardness, uh, discipline that they can beat anybody because they were behind in nearly every final they played mm. in and yet they just overpowered the opposition, just wore them down. And uh, Luke Beveridge, just a massive tick. Yeah. Luke Beveridge could not win another game for the rest of his life, but uh, yeah. he'll go down as uh, the man that just uh, just got the Bulldogs off the ground, yep. off the canvas, and turned yep. them into a premiership success in two years. And beating West Coast in that first final, yeah. as, as you touched on, then beating the reigning Premier the following week, yeah. and then courageously, without their, their number one Ruckman, in the preliminary final against mm. GWS, then getting through to the grand final, and then defying the bookies yeah. yet again to do what they did. We'll go back to the home and away season, yeah. just to highlight a, a couple of... Uh, big moments and big plays and uh, the man who won the Norm Smith medal, Jason Johannesson Lotto, loved what he did in 2016 long before the grand final. This was his return game after eight weeks out with a serious hamstring injury. He certainly tested that hamstring with that kick that uh, ultimately won the game against the Swans and the second time they'd done that in, in two years at that venue. Yeah, just uh, they had some big wins which just gives you belief and uh, as I said they've taken care of Sydney, they had a great win against Port Adelaide away as well uh, we just made them believe this year they're a tough team to beat, never got blown away. My season highlight is a player like this comes along, Marcus Ponton mm. Not Not every year, they come along maybe every 10, 15 years. And we've seen Fife season last year, we've seen Dangerfield season this year. This guy, it might be the season next year at Bonton Pally. He had a big year this year, but I think he might be the best player in the game next year. In this moment, round 20, North thought, we're going to hunt this guy. We think he's a nice player. Yep. We know he's good, but let's see if we can test him men mentally. And he just stood up. He yep. captained that night. He was best man on the ground. And he stood up again through the final series. And he was the cleanest ball user yeah, oh, yeah. in that uh, frenetic grand final. final, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, magnificent. Look, as we do, even for premiership winning teams, Lotto, in the course of these wash-ups, we look at uh, some lowlights of the club. And it seems a long time ago now when Zane Cordy and mm. Tom Boyd had a little dust-up. Yeah. It also seems a, a long time ago when Jake Stringer was mm. playing VFL, rounds 22 and 23, when Luke Beveridge put him back in. But each individual learnt and gained something mm. out of those experiences, didn't they? So even they made the lowlights into, yeah. into positives when yeah. it all mattered on, on grand final day. Yeah, he, as I said, he, in a previous in our Access All Areas show after the grand final where they, he's dropped Cramery, he's dropped Stringer, he dropped Boyd for a while, yet they come back better players. Uh, my my low light is just seeing players miss out on premier success. So yeah. to see Rob Murphy in tears, uh, Mitch Wallace, he's a, he would have been in that side. Red Path, Red I Path. think, would have played. Yeah. Lin Jong was Lin probably Jong, And Matty Suckling's Achilles, he said, he yeah. just was never going to play. So heartbreak for those players. Yeah. OK, I don't think I've ever done this before, Lotto, but I'm about to give the perfect score for mm. the Bulldogs in 2016 by way of marking them 10 out of 10. I, I don't see how you can rank, rank them or, or mark them any lower than that. Yeah. I, I, we've yeah. never seen what they've done before. No, no, I'm with you. It's just a remarkable effort. One of the greatest grand final wins of all time. They have to get a 10. OK. There's so many areas in which Christmas bonus money should be a portion, but I'm going to give it to, to one of my all-time favourite players, Lotto. He's had an extraordinary career already. Mm. Dale Morris uh, has come back from a very, very serious knee injury back in two, uh, the leg injury, wasn't yeah. it, in 2011, just played this season uh, as though it meant so much to him. Mm. And then we find out after the grand final yeah. win that he's played the finals with a broken vertebra. Um, yeah. Just one of the really special people at that footy club as well. He had to play him a few times. He's yeah. tough to get a kick on. Now, my Christmas bonus is for a guy who's probably on the base wage at the Western Bulldogs. So he deserves the big bonus because he took out Josh Kennedy in the first final yeah. and Buddy Franklin in the grand final. Plus, you know, he played on Patton and Jeremy Cameron at times in the other finals. So 
just a great story. He, he got to Geelong in 2011, yep. didn't play a game there, and, and spent four years. Goes, comes to the Western Bulldogs and he holds up their defence. Remarkable effort. Yeah, it's a good call. Yeah. Hey, the uh, club now needs to look at its list, as every other club does, and uh, as such, there will be some on the chopping block. Kobe Stevens, to me, looms as mm. one. He is out of contract and he couldn't get a look in late in the piece, and he uh, has already explored in, in his own mind anyway a future elsewhere, and I think it's just is the right time now to, to go and do so, and he will, I think, end up at a third AFL club once this trade period's finished. Yeah, my chopping block's along a similar path. I think Ling Zhong uh, is a depth player at the Western Bulldogs, yeah. but I think after touring the facilities uh, at Collingwood, he may not end up at Collingwood, but I think it's time for him to... I think he could be a regular at another club, like the Gold Coast Suns, who are also interested yep. in him, or Collingwood. I don't think he'll get a game every week at the Dogs, so I think I'd move on if I was Ling Zhong. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we in the media have a, a weird fascination, don't we, with uh, Falcons. <laughs> I, I think we saw the best ever Falcon during the year. Uh, he gets a few Bronx cheers and, and laughter here, uh, Tom Boyd, but you just feel like you know, the player he became on grand final today to this point, you can see just... Just lost his bearings there and uh, actually headbutted the ball into the grandstand, which is a funny moment. OK, they're going to have to, to improve, aren't they, Lottie? You can't go into one year, uh, the next yeah. year after Premiership year even, without doing something. But Tom Boyd's coming of age. And look, I, we felt he was uh, arguably unlucky to not win the mm. Norm Smith medal. But just now that we've seen what he can do, as much in the preliminary final, I think, mm. when he covered for Jordan Ruffhead as well as the grand final, he takes the next step mm. again he's going to be every bit worth what they uh, paid for him. Yeah, it's fantastic. Fantastic uh, reward for the dogs and the faith they've shown. Mine, what they need to do is remain hungry. I know yeah. I played in a side that should have had more success than we did at Essendon. I saw Hawthorne in 2008 win a surprise grand final yeah. and they came back unfit and they were lazy in 09. Missed the finals. They missed the finals. So I think that's the big challenge for the Bulldogs. Can they remain hungry? Because it only takes two or three players to mm. drop off and someone will take your crown. So that's, yeah. that's their biggest challenge moving forward. OK, as we go out of 2016 into 2017, we can't have them going up. They're already up. So they can only stagnate or go down. But I've got them uh, going stagnating. Lord, they'll be thereabouts again, I would think. Yeah, stagnating for mine too. They'll be top four. And it's just whether they can be the best side in September, October again next season. Thanks, Lord. Thanks, Thanks for David. all your input Great, on you these too. wash ups. Uh, and that's the wash up for the Premiers of 2016, the Western Bulldogs.